Um, I'd say let's start with our manifestation for a just peace in the Middle East. We're going to start with a couple of words by Jeremy Corbyn. We will listen to him after I have spoken some words. Um, there were some calendar clashes, which is why he wasn't able to come here. So uh, the clashes in this calendar are very applaudable. Jeremy Corbyn is currently in The Hague, where the claim of South Africa is being negotiated for the alleged genocide of Israel against Palestine. And I think most of you have heard this name. Let me briefly tell you something. He's a trade union functionary and independent member of parliament in the UK from 2015 to 2020. He was the chairman of the Labour Party. Uh, can, can you let me uh, speak for a while? And he was also leader of the opposition. His criticism against the occupation policy of the Israel League government triggered a campaign against himself, which led to unbased allegations of anti-Semitism on his part. And in this video, we are going to listen to Jeremy Corbyn talking to us. Today, January the 13th, 2024, a global day of action for Palestine. Demonstrations are being organized in every major city, in every continent, all around the world, to show our decent human support for the Palestinian people. 22,000 already recorded as dead, 8,000 bodies estimated to be under the rubble, on top of the 1,200 killed on October the 7th. Every school in Gaza has been hit, most have been completely destroyed, 70% of the housing destroyed. Every hospital hit, most have closed. Doctors performing operations without anaesthetic and without proper equipment, just to try and keep people alive. The United Nations reporting that the levels of starvation means that those that are recovering from operations die from hunger or thirst as a result of it. It's unconscionable that this human disaster is being recorded in real time on television. And many Western governments are supplying weapons and support to Israel to continue this bombardment. We need a ceasefire now to bring about justice for the Palestinian people. But not just stopping the fighting, we need an end to the occupation. We need an end to the settlement policy. We need justice for the Palestinian refugees who've been more than three decades in refugee camps. Join in the call for a ceasefire now. Join in the call for justice for the Palestinian people. You can now listen to Callum Bird, and I'm going to say more about him in a moment. Thank you for having me here today. It's been it's a pleasure to be here. It's a pleasure to be on stage, showing solidarity with the people of Palestine at this serious time, and to be asking who owns the world, who owns the world. This is a song of mine. It's called uh, Beauty in the Worst of Times. I wrote the song as a reply to Bertolt Brecht, who, yeah, woo, who said, uh, will there be singing in the dark times? He said, yes, there will be singing about the dark times. And this is my song about the dark times, but calling for solidarity among people around the world, calling for beauty and art, calling for beauty and not war. I've been Standing out in the rain Thinking about changing the weather Over and again Been feeling fragmentary Like a painting incomplete But I don't want to be defined By thoughts of defeat So you paint 
the flowers and I'll write the songs even in cheerless places the show must go on there will be singing in dark times too I won't be shifted from this point of view gold from corrosion so simple yet divine beauty in the worst of times beauty in the worst of times Thank you, thank you. Free Palestine. And I'd now like to introduce him. You will listen to him and you will hear him again at the end of this manifestation. Kellen Bird is a singer-songwriter from Scotland who focuses on social and political topics in his songs. As a teenager, he started to write his own songs and then he was inspired by Neil Young, Bob Dylan and Billy Bragg. And ever since his initial album, No Right Turn, he's been performing on a regular basis on festivals, also during the Festival of the Political Song, which took place in Berlin. And alongside his music, Callum Bird is a passionate advocate of social justice and equal opportunities. He knows our Karl Marx as he knows our Bert Brecht. In these dark times, will there also be songs? Yes, there will be singing about the dark times, that's what he says. And so, Callum Baird talks and sings about poverty, inequality, and racism. Just like in his song, Beauty in the Worst of Times, where he talks about that He's always looking for beauty. So we're going to listen to him another time in a couple of moments. But before that, I'd like to announce another musician, composer, and scientific translator from Frankfurt. He's the head of the Jewish voice for a just peace in the Middle East. Well, I need to continue. Uh, nice to see you. So, he he talks about the expulsion of people from Gaza. This is something uh, that is very touching to him, very close to him, important matter to him. And he feels ashamed that there is hardly any pressure from Germany, hardly any pressure from Europe against it. But uh, what we see instead is the criminalization of everybody who defends Palestine. Having been asked uh, for his demands in view of this situation, he answers, I demand an end of bombardment, an end of blockade, and an end of repression in Germany of the undermining of dem democratic basic rights, like the right to freely assemble and to freely express your expression. Let me welcome Wieland Hoban. You have the floor. There is no peace without justice. This is more than just a slogan that has become famous in the form of no justice, no peace. It is rather a statement that arises from a consideration of causes and contexts 
not from a superficial glance at the immediate situation. But let's start by making it very clear. A genocide is taking place in Gaza. Over 23,000 people killed and thousands more under the rubble. They are the result of a merciless bombing campaign that spares neither apartment blocks nor mosques, churches, schools, cultural institutions or hospitals. Entire neighborhoods and their history are wiped out. Evacuation orders are repeatedly issued. People are shoot back and forth, but then bombed again, because there is no safe place in Gaza. The threat of famine and disease has long since become a reality. Four out of five people in Gaza are in an advanced state of starvation. Meanwhile, Israeli soldiers publish TikTok videos where you see them blowing up buildings, being happy about it, humiliating prisoners, destroying homes. And there are policymakers who have been using the rhetoric of extermination and annihilation from day one are calling for the relentless progression of the massacre, including in some cases the resettlement of Gaza following an ethnic cleansing operation. There is a widespread belief amongst the public at large that the whole story began on October 7th with the attack by Gaza militias in southern Israel. Israel must defend itself, they say. Of course, this ignores the core of the events we're witnessing. We don't necessarily have to go back to 1947, to the beginning of the Nakba, which led to the obliteration of 531 Palestinian villages, the expulsion of some 750,000 Palestinians, and the killing of over 10,000 Palestinians. We don't even have to go back to the beginning of the occupation of West Bank, Gaza, and East Jerusalem, the Golan Heights in 1967 where we don't have to go back to the first intifada in the late 1980s or the second intifada in the early 2000s. Let's just go back to 2007, when Israel, with Egyptian support, started the blockade of Gaza with the beginning of the Hamas government. This was the beginning of a suffocation of normal life that people had probably not expected after the liberation from the settlers in 2005. Restrictions on imports and exports, encirclement on land, at sea, and from the air, and a total takeover of control in which even calories were counted in order to calculate how much could be withheld from the inhabitants without them starving to death. We will put the Palestinians on a diet, said Dov Weisglas, advisor to the then Prime Minister Ariel Sharon. This diet had been in place for 16 years before October 7, 2023. It included not only restrictions, but also naked violence, for example, against fishermen who were repeatedly shot at and arrested or have their boats taken away allegedly for exceeding the, exceeding the permitted zone, which in turn is too small and shallow to make large catches of fish there, or the major bombings of 2008, 2012, 2014, and on a smaller scale every few years since then. Until three months ago, the 2014 attack in which 1,000 500 civilians were killed, including 500 children, was the worst. And in 2018-19, during the Great March of Return, when over 200 protesters were killed and thousands seriously injured. Anyone who is 16 years old in Gaza today has already survived mass murder six times. So it was not a first strike. October 7th, but an une unexpected response to decades of oppression and the indifference, the normalization of this state of affairs in the rest of the world. Violence begets counterviolence, but in the worldwide horror of this attack, few saw the years of violence that preceded it. The Israeli victims were mourned as human beings. People heard stories about them and saw the suffering of their relatives. Countless world leaders expressed their dismay. 
but the dead and injured in Gaza mainly remain just numbers, and even those numbers are called into question. Well, Hamas is portrayed as unprecedentedly barbaric and inhumane for killing hundreds of civilians. Western politicians shrug their shoulders at over 9,000 dead Palestinian children. Since then, there's been a racist atmosphere in Germany that many people have never experienced before. The Muslim and Arab population is under general suspicion of terrorism and anti-Semitism. Demonstrations in favor of Palestine were banned one after another in the first few weeks, after which harassment by authorities continued on another level with unfounded charges, arrests and raids. Right-wing politicians complain about imported anti-Semitism, quote-unquote, of migrants, while the far-right AFD has enjoyed over 20% support for months and has been calling for the deportation of migrants, even those with German passports. Even Herbert Aiwanger was allowed to participate in the shift of blame after his own Nazi scandal last summer remained without any consequences. German President Steinmeier has called on citizens of Arab origin to distance themselves from Hamas. There's often been talk of the threat to the Jewish population, but the fact that during a rise in anti-Semitic events, there was a shocking increase in racism against Muslims and migrants, which was also supported by politicians and the media, hardly seemed to matter. And that we, as Jewish participants in demonstrations, did not feel threatened by the other demonstrators, but rather by the police, is another aspect. In a television interview, German Foreign Minister Baerbock said it was not the job of politicians to call for a ceasefire. Even Emmanuel Macron, president of one of the of Europe's major colonialist countries, spoke out against the daily massacres in Gaza weeks ago. Instead, German politicians have just been repeating the same Israeli propaganda platitudes about destroying Hamas while watching as the next generations in Gaza were given a thousand reasons to become fighters themselves. Of course, we must call for a ceasefire. This is the minimum amount of humanity in this situation that is required. But just ending the killing does not amount to justice. South Africa is showing the world what a legal step towards justice could look like. The indictment against Israel for the crime of genocide at the International Criminal Court consists of 84 pages with ample evidence of both genocidal in intent and genocidal acts. While the interim goal is illegally enforced, ceasefire, the long-term goal is a judgment on this murderous state. Whatever comes out of it, much more is needed in Palestine. The situation before the first bombs was already unacceptable, and it is imperative that the problems that have existed for decades are solved. The blockade of Gaza must be ended, as must the occupation of the West Bank, where there's daily violence by extremist settlers and the army and East, Jer East Jerusalem. The right of return of the refugees must be asserted. And the equality of Palestinian citizens of Israel. The division of the Palestinians, which has always been pursued deliberately by Netanyahu and his predecessors, must come to an end so that they can finally govern themselves together without 
sham autonomy and collaboration. No matter what state structure ultimately emerges, the indispensable cornerstone is that every person in the entire territory of Israel and Palestine can live in freedom with equal rights. Peace without justice is subjugation. And that is why we must demand not only peace, but justice for Palestine. Anything else would be betrayal. Thank you. Colin West held his speech on 10th of November 2023 during a demonstration, and the numbers of victims that he mentioned are not correct anymore because they are way higher by now, and we heard it. We heard about 23,000 dead people, 10,000 children amongst them at least, who are the victims of these bomb raids. Colonel West is from Oklahoma. He's one of the leading intellectuals, Afro-American thinkers. He's professor for theology. He is the grandchild of a preacher. And as a young man, he 
felt inspired by the civil rights movement in America. He did his PhD on ethical aspects of Marxism. He understands himself as a revolutionary Christian, and he calls Martin Luther King to be his model, and he is as convincing as Martin Luther King was, I believe. We continue with our manifestation now with Nabil Rashid, who is the first chairman of the umbrella organization of Arab associations. He is going to talk about the Palestinian Society for Human Rights. Friends, opponents of war, within the last 13 weeks, Gaza has been destroyed. 17%, 70 percent of the buildings have been destroyed. All of the hospitals are no longer working. The people are living on the streets. I have friends who came to visit me in Berlin in 2013, and that is an association of people with disabilities. And they are giving me messages, texting me, and telling me that for the, they have fled for the 10th time, 10 times they have had to flee where they were. Three of them cannot be found. They are still under the ruins of buildings, but the German government wants to tell us that this war is taking place between the democratic state of Israel and the terrorist movement of Hamas. No. The fact is that this war is being waged by the right-wing radical government of Netanyahu against the Palestinian people. Over 13,000 children who have been killed are not Hamas supporters. And the German government is simply aping the Israeli propaganda and trying to oppress us here in Germany. We haven't even been allowed to raise the Palestinian flag in our demonstrations. We haven't even been allowed to wear our Palestinian head scarves. There are thousands of Palestinians in Berlin alone who have been had charges pressed against them for wearing their headscarves or raising their flags. Our children are not allowed to go to school with any Palestinian symbols on them. If they do, they'll be sent home from school. They're not allowed to speak about Palestine either. So that means the German government is trying to ignore and destroy our ethnicity and our culture. But let me tell you one thing. Peoples do not die out. Friends, we need you. We are Palestinians in Germany and in Palestine need the peace movement. Without you, it will become very difficult for us. In Germany, we need to exert an enormous pressure so that here in Germany, we are allowed to express our opinion freely. Please express your solidarity with us and with our movement, with Palestine. Viva Palestine! Viva, viva Palestina! 
Viva, viva Palestina. Down with apartheid, down with fascism, and down with racism. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Rashid, for the very moving speech which opened our hearts. Now I would like to introduce Fatan al-Dabas, an artist. She is the daughter of Palestinian refugees and sees Berlin as her home and Palestine as her homeland. She is an author and a political scientist, but also a lyricist who likes to speak her t lyrics on stage. So she's a spoken word artist. We even use that term in German. And through the second expulsion of the Palestinians, as she formulates it, the situation in her homeland and the increasing, increasing exclusion and defamation of herself stronger than ever before, she identifies as a political spoken word artist. In a nutshell, she belongs at this conference. Fatin al-Dabas, you have the floor. Thank you. There are friends and enemies. There are victims and perpetrators. There's black and white. And there's truth and lies. And above all of that, there is the human. And we Palestinians are human beings. We are accused of anti-Semitism anti-Semitic slogans we are said to shout out loud at our demonstrations. But I ask myself, what about the countless Jewish people who protest with us step for step because we are losing faith in humanity completely? The Palestinian flag in your hand, Zionism and J Jewishness at the same time is on my poster. Peace and freedom for Palestinians is on my poster and on their posters. We are unequal and yet equal, taking the same steps in the same rhythm. We are committed to ending violence all over the world, regardless of race and religion. Despite the war crimes committed by Israel, the massacres committed by Israel, the 30,000 deaths at the hands of Israel, live in real time before the eyes of the world, but the world is hibernating and has been hibernating for over 75 years. For over 75 years, I've been trying to wake you up, Germany. But you would rather ask questions whether I belong to you or not, whether I'm a Muslim or maybe a hidden terrorist, whether I'm allowed to be German or whether I'm always going to be a foreigner just because my parents are from foreign countries that you don't know, except maybe from going on holiday or from having lunch with colleagues. Germany, and I guess my religion confuses you because attributions of what I am dominates the present and the unknown scares you, but I want to take that fear from you, reach out my hand to you, because first and foremost, you are a human to me, human. human. You don't have to be a Muslim or an Arab to recognize injustice against Palestinians. Human, open your eyes. I don't want a little donation when I open my hand to you. Human, open the eyes. I'll hold a mirror up to you. Stand in front of you. Do you see how human you are? Do you see how human I am? 
made of flesh and blood, alive, but quivering inside. Anger flares up. My eyes are burning because Gaza is burning, because my homeland is burning, because houses are burning, because Palestinian bodies are burning again and again, over and over, and no one stops it. No one to arbitrate, no support, no fire extinguisher at hand, because no one reaches out to us. Our hand remains outstretched in the air. Our cry for help is not answered. Germany, instead, arms exports increase tenfold, and over ten. Over a a hundred dead children a day in Gaza, Germany. We are frozen in anger and grief, and still not a word about an end to the violence. Germany, why? What remains is only rubble and ashes, red asphalt, bombed dreams, bombed schools and places of workshop, traumas, white shrouds, shattered dreams, burning hospitals and UN buildings, and every day anew, numbers that count the dead, number that count the dead. But don't forget, these numbers represent people. We Palestinians are people. Don't reduce me to Hamas. Don't reduce me to Fatah, because we Palestinians are human beings. We stand and fight in our own country for our own country against the occupying power. We Palestinians are human beings. We are standing and fighting for our rights, for human rights. We Palestinians are human beings. We are standing and fighting for our survival, for a just future in life. We Palestinians are human beings. We're standing and fighting. And if we are not yet dead, then we are dreaming of peace. And if God takes us to himself, Our children will continue to dream of peace, free Palestine, free Palestine. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. That was very moving, says Gina. Now, thank you to all of you for this manifestation. We're going to conclude with another song by Callum Baird now, who's going to sing a song that we have to hear at this conference. There were two lines of this song that I started the conference with, and he's now going to sing Bertolt Brecht, Hans Eisler, the Solidarity Song. Hello again, comrades. Mm. I'm going to sing for you in English. My German is no good. <laughs> you can sing in German, of course, or Spanish, or whatever language you like. People of the world together join to serve the common cause. So feed us all forever. See to it that it now is yours. Forward without forgetting where our strength can be seen now to be. When starving or when eating, forward not forgetting. 
our solidarity. Black or white or brown or yellow, leave your old disputes behind. Once you start talking with your fellow men, soon you'll be of one mind. Forward without forgetting where our strength can be seen now to be. When starving or when eating, forward not forgetting our solidarity. <laughs> if we make this certain, we need your support. It's yourselves you'll be deserting if you rat on your own sort. Oh, forward without forgetting where our strength can be seen now to be when starving or when eating. Forward, not forgetting in solidarity, and again, forward. Our solidarity Thank you comrades, thank you. Solidarity forever.